Sometimes you never know you can fly if you never jump, right? That leap of faith. Sometimes fasting is taking that leap of faith. Hey, what's up YouTube? It's me, Camille Brandy. Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> So it is Esther season, y'all. Esther season. One of my friends said that to me the other day, and I just was like, wait, wait, wait. I love that. Come again. So basically, if you are familiar with Esther in the Bible, she spent a year being prepared, doing beauty treatments before going before the king. And I mean, she had different herbs and spices, whether she was drinking them or bathing to soften her skin. I'm sure she ate specific foods during that period of time, but it was all in preparation of meeting her king. Now for you, it might not necessarily be a king that you were in preparation for. Perhaps God has called you to be a self-employed entrepreneur. Or maybe it's for you to buy your own house. Or maybe you're getting ready to move from one end of the country to the other. Maybe even across the globe. But what I do know is, is that God has called us as his children to be in expectation and preparation for what's to come. And so I really wanted to do this Daniel Fast Project as a way for us all to journey together. So this week is week one of the Daniel Fast. This particular video might be a little bit longer because I definitely want to lay some foundation for those who aren't familiar with the Daniel Fast, what fasting is, and how to prepare. And I will wrap up this video with sharing a story about what I experienced week one of my Daniel Fast. You guys ready? Let's go. So question number one, what is fasting? I know some of you might know, but just for those of you who may not know, fasting is the practice of denying one's flesh so then that way their spirit man can become stronger. You know, there are many different sides to who we are. We are triune beings, meaning we have our bodies, our flesh, we have our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions, including our intellect and our imaginations. And then we have our spirit man. Our spirit man is what will return to heaven and will commune with the Lord for all of eternity. So it is our spirit man that we want to be strengthened. It is that which gets closer to God that causes us to hear God clearer, to understand the word of God in a more enriched way. And it is then our flesh that begins to take a back seat. You see, our flesh seems to be running the show and we kind of just are on autopilot as it's running the show. You'll know that your flesh is the running the show if you Sometimes we've been on autopilot so long, we've, are, we've been so clogged up by social media and TV and internet and other people's opinions that we can't even seem to hear God clearly. We don't know the way in which we should walk. And so it is in those moments that we choose to fast. So then that way we can hear God clearer so that we can see change in our lives. So that is what is fasting and why you should fast. All right, so let's quickly talk about two different types of fasts. There is a complete fast and then there is a partial fast. So a complete fast is a water only fast. Now please keep in mind that your body cannot go without water for more than three days. However, the body can go without food for anywhere between 21 to 40 days. It depends. It depends on the person's body, health, um, like vitamins or medications. It depends on so many different variables. 
So please make sure before embarking on a complete fast that you check in with your doctors and most importantly, that you spend a lot of time in the word of God as well as in the presence of the living God to really understand what type of complete fast you are to embark on as far as your health is concerned. All right, so the other type of fast is a partial fast and that is the bucket that the Daniel fast falls into. Why? Because a partial fast is the idea that you're still eating. Um, so we are going to be eating lots of fruits and vegetables on the Daniel fast. And that is the second question. What do you eat and what can't you eat on the Daniel fast? So the best way that I can explain how to prepare yourself um, from a grocery standpoint for the Daniel fast is it is a clean vegan fast. All right, so simply put, clean eating means no processed foods, no chips, no bags of things. So there's no herbal tea, no caffeine, meaning no coffee, not even decaf coffee. If you want something hot to drink, stick with water, hot water with a slice of lemon. I do heavily rely on this blog called the ultimate Daniel fast.com. I will make sure to put the link in the description bar below. And I use that to gather a lot of recipes, but things you can have is brown rice, barley, all the fruits and all the veggies you can think of. I love walnuts. So I will buy like whole walnuts and then I will crack them because I feel like I'm doing something with my hands and then eat the walnuts out of the shells. And it's just a great little interactive snack. Um, peanut butter is fine, obviously in moderation. All the smoothies and juices you can handle. And of course, plenty of water. You need your H2O. Food, glorious food. <laughs> There's so much having to do with foods as it pertains to the Daniel fast. So again, check out the link below. It's called the Ultimate Daniel Fast. All right, so we are getting down to the nitty gritty. We have talked about what is fasting. We have talked about the difference between a complete fast and a partial fast. And we have talked about foods to eat and what not to eat. Obviously, you wanna make sure you do your own research because your dietary needs might be different and there might be something that your doctor wants you to continue to implement in your diet. So make sure that you do your own research and not just listen to the few things that I've mentioned on this video. All right, so if you've got your pen and your paper, I want you to take some notes here. Question number one, what's your why? Why are you fasting? What's ruminating in your head over and over again? What do you feel like you need breakthrough in? It might be something that is intangible, like um, a mental illness. It's serious and you might need breakthrough in that. It might mean that you have to make a decision and you're not quite sure which way you are to go in your decision making and you need to fast. Maybe it's a relationship. Perhaps you feel in your heart that this is not the person for you and you need to know if this is God's promise for you or not. That would be, those are some other really good reasons to fast. But you always want to make sure that as you are writing out your why, that you also have an accountability partner. Another interesting fact about fasting, I'll make sure that I link the scripture below, is that you don't share the fact that you are fasting with everybody. This is also a personal and intimate time between you and the Lord. And so again, you do want to make sure that you have one or two accountability partners. But aside from that, this is not something that should be shared. You might go into the office one day and that's the day that you decided to start your fast and there's going to be a whole table of pink donut boxes. Mm -hmm. 
or somebody's going to invite you to lunch or you're going to get a gift card somewhere and or you're going to come home and the kids have made you dinner and it's going to make you feel sad. It's going to make you feel like, oh man, I'm missing out. Don't, don't you have FOMO. It's not for you to have that fear of missing out. And that is where your list comes in. When you have that list, you are continuously reminding yourself why you're choosing to embark on this fast. In the, in the hard times when you're really craving that cup of coffee or when you're like, oh, that pizza that the kids are eating looks really, really good. That is when you start to remind yourself that what you are seeking the Lord about, what you're petitioning the Lord for is greater than eating that piece of pie or that slice of pizza or having that warm cup of coffee. And that's how I particularly get through those moments of temptation. Okay, so you guys have your list. Do you have your list of the things that you are petitioning God for? Okay, good. You know, it doesn't need to be holier than thou prayer. I want you to take your list and I want you to sit before the Lord and I want you to simply say, God, I really have been struggling with this area. Or maybe even perhaps you've had doubt and unbelief that he's going to do what he said he was going to do. And so maybe that piece of paper with the list of the things that you're believing for is a way that you're saying, Lord, I'm taking it out of myself and I am giving it to you. I'm laying it at your feet. And every time you look at that piece of paper, you decree and you declare that this has been given to the Lord and that you're not going to worry about it any longer. And then you begin to sit with God. And this is the next step, mentally preparing, right? So how do you mentally prepare for this fast? You want to make sure that you set yourself a start date. I would also recommend letting the people in your household know. They can also pair as your accountability partners. So you set yourself a start date and it's really great to set it because then you start mentally preparing yourself. And normally what I do is, yes, you guys, I will eat everything in the whole entire world like leading up. Like all the things that I think are going to tempt me, I will have beforehand. Because somehow in my brain, I feel like I'll have a taste for it already. And then I know that when I'm in it, I can think back to like, oh, I just had that. And it, it's not as big as my mind is making it out to be, right? And it's kind of easier to get over that hump. And then, of course, as mentioned before, you want to lessen the activities on your schedule. Just tell them that you have a block on your calendar and you will reschedule after your end date. Yes. <laughs> some other areas of fasting okay so yes we are fasting food we are on the Daniel fast we are also clearing the clutter from our bodies right we are giving our organs a chance to rest and heal but we also need to dismantle the disruptions and clear the clutter and the best way to do that is to make sure that you're minimizing all other disruptions distractions and clearing the clutter Yes. So that means social media. That means TVs, movies, even Netflix. That also includes um, maybe potentially unhealthy relationships that you might need to put on ice for a little bit of time. This also would include any unhealthy habits or websites that you find yourself being tempted to take up your time, such as online dating, maybe even pornography. This is a really good time to put that on pause, especially if you believe that you've been battling with pornography. This is a really great time to put it on pause and to tell your flesh, again, to sit down because you're going to be doing a new thing that your spirit man is going to rise up and take a leadership and prominent position over your mind, your will, and your emotions. 
and that your spirit man would receive everything that the Lord has for you. Amen. There's other things like pills, um, workout pills or energy pills or pharmaceutical grade pills. You might need to, to flush them, but put them on pause. You can fast them. You can say, I'm not going to do this because I don't need my flesh dictating how my future is going to turn out. I get to dictate that with Christ. Amen. We have free will. That's why you get a part to play. You are a co-creator with Christ. So as you co-create, you get to create something beautiful or something destructive. Amen. So I removed all these things, right? I flushed the pills down the toilet. I've turned off the internet. I turned off the TV. I'm not scrolling through my Instagram. Camille, what am I doing in my time? Right? Great question. So these are things that you can add in. These are really great opportunities for you to get closer to God so that you can hear God and you can start to really get some answers to some of the puzzling questions that you have been faced with. All right, so let's talk about some things that you can do in the house without turning anything on, but maybe perhaps some music. Worship music, you could worship. And that is a great way to start any prayer is by giving glory and honor to the Most High God. Worship music, prayer, whether you are praying quietly to yourself or you are praying out loud or you're praying in tongues, prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer. And again, it doesn't need to be holier than thou. It needs to be conversation, like how you and I are having this conversation right here and right now, right? So just start talking to God. Start telling him how you feel and allow whatever is starting to come up to actually come up. You're fasting. You are clearing the clutter. You are getting the junk out so that things can start to flow more smoothly in your life. So worship music, praying, how about listening to sermons, journaling, consecration. I have a phenomenal video on consecration and there's also a booklet that goes with it and I'll make sure that that's linked in the description bar below. Consecration is a phenomenal tool to use to get you actually in the presence of God. Um, you spend 20 minutes a day doing consecration and then move right into praise and worship, maybe journaling and prayer time. And I promise you, your whole life will shift, but I'm saving the best for last. So Camille, what do I fill my time with if I have gotten rid of all the things that seem to entertain me? And that's reading the word of God. How do you ever expect to understand the word of God and to decree the word of God over your life and to know what God says about you and about your circumstances if you don't read his word? I'm looking for my Bible, but make sure that you read your Bible. Make sure that you spend some time in his word. And even if you have one scripture that you just start playing over and over and over in your head, it will begin to replace those taunting voices and ruminating thoughts of why hasn't this happened yet or why this person hurt you or I'm not good enough or all of the different things that sometimes seem to plague our lives and our minds. Get in the word of God. And these are all wonderful ways that you can get closer to God. Why? Because you are co-creating with God, because you are now partnering with God, and now you have determined in your heart to agree with God and to start to do more things that would align with his kingdom and less things that align with the world. When you begin to live outside of your comfort zone, you will begin to discover new and wonderful aspects to who you are and what God has for you. Sometimes you never know you can fly if you never jump, right? That leap of faith. Sometimes fasting is taking that leap of faith 
you've heard it time and time again. They say that um, insanity is thinking that if you do the same thing, you're going to get a different result, right? I'm paraphrasing. So what if you did something different? What if you sacrificed? What if you sacrificed some of your creature comforts for something unknown that can be the best thing that's ever happened to you? Yeah. Again, you want to dismantle the disruptions and you want to clear the clutter. You're clearing the clutter from your life on the outside and also on the inside and you'll feel better just leaving you with a blessing. There's a great big God out there who knows your name. He has put gifts inside of you that make room for you and seat you amongst mighty men. He has commanded his angels concerning you to guide you and bless you and keep you. So until next time, bye.